Hello everybody, this is Leo Brady with TheMovieGuy.com. I am incredibly excited to be here today at Fantastic Fest with the writer and director of his new film, Your Lucky Day. This is Dan Brown, and we are also here with the star, one of the stars of this film, Jessica Garza. Thanks for being with me. Uh, So, Dan, my first question has to be for you. So, I watched the short, Mm -hmm. and and then I watched the feature, um, tell me a little bit about the path for this, going from the short to the feature, uh, was that always the plan? It was never the plan. <laughs> when did you see the short? Like recently? Yeah, I, I found it on like YouTube, I think All it was right. a Vimeo. Someone might have uh, yeah. downloaded it, I took it offline, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. Yeah. Um, yeah. The short uh, was, I had an idea that I thought was like a good idea for a short film, yeah. and that was sort of it. Like I am a big fan of short films, it's just like short films, so I wrote a short film. I was not Damon Chazelle. <laughs> he had the right plan. You hear his story, like, oh, that guy knew what he was doing. Right. <laughs> I want to do this and this. I didn't do any of that. Um, so I wrote a short. It did really well online, caught on. Um, it did really great. And then I took a bunch of meetings. You know, you go to LA. I live in Seattle. Well, I used to live in Seattle, but I went to LA, took a bunch of meetings, and it was all like, we'd like to make a feature. I didn't have a feature in mind, and the short, you saw it, it ends pretty definitively. For yeah, me. yeah. There wasn't anywhere really to go. Um, right. And I didn't feel like I had an answer that like was satisfied that satisfied my sense of like what would make it worthwhile. Um, so it just sort of was one of those things, you know. I turned a bunch of interested parties into like useless general meetings, and then you know, and years later, just sort of some of the stuff that I had hoped would be less relevant felt like even more relevant, like some of the social stuff. I think. Yeah. And I was like, okay, well, this still really works as an idea. So I had one kind of like aha moment where it's like, okay, if the guy who wins is rich, then I can make sense of the rest of the story and then I'll kind of like build from there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome. Um, Well, yeah, that's interesting too because uh, Jessica, for you, uh, getting onto this this project, uh, first of all, your performance is fantastic. Uh, You should be very proud of this. Um, uh, You're playing a pregnant woman. Uh, Acting in that state can be difficult. Uh, Was was your uh, take just to roll with it? Or did you sort of prep a little bit with the character or talk with Dan and then understand the character a lot more after that? Uh, it's funny because uh, I've been saying here and there that I have it, I didn't have any time to prep. Yeah. And that's mostly true, but I did make sure to have time to ask for the belly yeah. ahead of time. Yes, yeah. And I like, wore it around Los Angeles. I remember <laughs> I like, wore it into Target and pretended to like shove in the baby clothes section. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, that wasn't really prep. That was me just... <laughs> It's perfect, though, yeah. <laughs> Being ridiculous. Um, so the process was really quick from from the movie, you know, uh, from getting cast to shooting. So there wasn't tons and tons of time to prep. Maybe not as much time, I guess, that I've had in the past for yeah. other projects. So that was definitely different. Um, playing pregnant is obviously very different. <laughs> and yeah. I never myself have been. So that was interesting to navigate. Um, and I had fun practicing. As <laughs> yeah. But... Um, yeah, this was running on a lot of like adrenaline, energy, instinct, and collaboration, which was um, which is always the case, but especially in yes. this film. Well, we had like a month to prep, and then we shot in fifteen days. So like, oh. and was, you had a month to prep. I had a month. To prep. <laughs> I decided right. basically November first that we were going to be shooting December first. So yeah. it was like wow, incredibly truncated. I mean, I had more time for like a commercial than I had. <laughs> right, and right. Well, well, it's interesting too. I wanted to ask you, Dan, about this about like directing this collective cast together. I mean, you're shooting pretty much everything in like tight spaces, small rooms, whether it's the back room or the front of the liquor store. Talk about sort of gathering these group of people to capture what you kind of don't want them to have chemistry because you want them to not know each other yeah. in a way. So is it really just spontaneous, or did you want to have, have them all get to know each other first and then go? I mean, I'm, the dream would have been to like shoot it in order, so that yeah. we, kind of, we kind of get to know each other as we go. Yep. That would be the ideal. I think we're pretty close to that as much as possible. There's a few scenes, in a weird way, because everyone, if they leave the store, they're kind of isolated, so like they're on their own anyway, so like you'd have these moments where they're, you're by yourself. Um, so those first couple scenes, and. One of the things we also did from a timing standpoint, there was a 
dream sequence that I got rid of. Uh, <laughs> but we shot it, like we actually, you met Elliot yeah. that day, so there was like an in-person, you guys met each other that day. For that day. So you gotta pretend to be like a real couple and you, we were uh, at my cousin's house, it's a very nice house, like, like a, a view of the ocean. So there was like a nice sense that they could just be on like a first date in my mind. I was like, oh, they're getting along. That's nice to see. Yeah. Yeah. And you guys had a really great relationship, I felt like. Yeah, we lucked out, honestly. Yeah. There, I, I, I'm sure, I think you mentioned you would have loved to have the luxury of more time. Yeah. You know what I mean? For us to rehearse or whatever, but that's just not what the case was. It's not what happened. We got thrown into it and, and luckily, I guess it was just by luck, yeah. you know, every single one of us was ready to go and excited and we had great chemistry, but in a way where like, we didn't know each other. So it's still like, it wasn't, you know, like there wasn't this rapport that was just too familiar. Yeah. Um, because none of us had, I don't think any of us had really met or known each other before. Um, and so it was strangers thrown together yeah. and we just happened to Even all work. Even was on Zoom, so like, and that yeah. was like its own... Yeah, and, like no one actually really had met each other until like yeah. they kind of meet each other for the first time. So there was like a weird. Yeah, like, well, so, sometimes that that makes for a better movie, doesn't it? I mean, I think that's <laughs> honestly, yeah. I, I think that works out in this circumstance, right? If you if you were making a movie about a, a married couple or like a, excuse me, like a family or you know having to know their environment, that's different. But this is sort of out in the world. Um, that does sort of get, bring me to like sort of the harsh reality of this story, right? Like. That there's there's greed and violence and this is this feels like a very American story. Every character is a slice of America. People that would make be representations. Uh, what I kind of what I loved about the film is honestly you don't pull your punches. You really like allow people to get hurt, bad things to happen. Uh, was that was that really sort of something that you contemplated? Did you ever waver and worry about about showing violence or or letting some characters get away with things or whatnot? I didn't really have that. I know, I didn't, I never thought about it like that. I mean, it is in the back of my mind a little bit maybe, but I didn't have any like sense that like anyone was pure or bad because of whatever. It was more like just sort of this is the situation, this is what the character does. Right. And try and sort of show like maybe what they're going through and why they think the way they do. And that would be it. Like, I mean, it, it also sort of in a way shows that greed can turn on a dime, right? I mean, I think it's sort of this sort of messaging, not messaging, but it's almost like speaking to how every person is unpredictable. Would you say that? I would say that for sure. Yeah. And that was one of the things too, I think, with your character, like um, in the writing of it, like again, compared to the short, it's actually like the their turns are different. I, I don't want to give away anything, but like, right, right. But, but I, yeah, that's, that's early enough in the movie. But like, you know, in the short, she wanted to do it and he didn't. Yeah. And this sort of was like having the last person on board, then kind of, and that happens, I think, a lot too, where like, and that was sort of like a big unlocking for me. It was like, oh yeah, but she's, she holds on the longest. And yeah. it's the hardest, like that kind of same will that was like, no, 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 was like, Oh fuck yes! Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I also love the idea that maybe Dude, everyone is. Cast? is that? I'm sorry. <laughs> no, you, you can swear. <laughs> I also love the idea that maybe everyone is susceptible to, yeah. you know, this when this amount is, you know, you have an opportunity, you know, to to put that in your pocket. You know, it's hard to fathom what you. you and I, yeah, I, I mean, I don't want to get. I, I mean, obviously, the film has a, a perspective. Uh, sure. I don't want to pretend like I don't, but I do think we do see like. This, I do think there's a line there, uh, Angus says there's like, we're gonna get away with this because we're rich. And I do kind of believe there's some sense, like we see some yeah. version yeah. of that all the time. Right. Like, oh, you've got money, you've got away with that crime. Right, right, we've, we've seen two-tiered justice systems for people who have money versus those who might not. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's that's really good. Um, last two questions, Jessica, for you. There, You have a really amazing like little monologue in the film, uh, talking into a walkie-talkie. I mean, <laughs> Talk about prepping for that. Uh, was that the hardest part of the role? Hardest scene to shoot? And, and 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 is somebody on the other end of that walkie-talkie for you to like go back and forth, or is it just you going? Uh, I was very very lucky, yeah. and um, despite Jason Omar not having to be there, he was. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so I'm very lucky because he's got a great voice. He's I got mean, a wonderful voice, Batman. Yeah, I mean, clearly, he's yeah, amazing. Yeah. Um, so I was very lucky that I had him in the background to to talk to me. Um, I'm sure you would have been great, but <laughs> <laughs> Jason's away. <laughs> um, 
the prep, yeah, like that scene, I, I think we were supposed to do it sooner. And I was like, and I was, un, I was not, I was like a little freaking out about it. And Dan was very kind. And he was like, you know, maybe there's a day or two that we can squeeze in between. We're going to some time. Yeah. And so uh, I'm very appreciate, appreciative of that because I think that was the time that I, I needed to find it and to play with it. And um, yeah, I, uh, it was a lot of fun, a lot of different um, elements going on there with entering the room and exiting and different things are happening in other scenes at the same time so it's a lot to work through that's like 15 pages that yeah. you're going through you know yeah and we were able to run it all the way through some takes but then yeah. some takes take bits and pieces it yeah. was quite the puzzle you know and it was a lot of fun to yeah. solve yeah. that's before we were shooting two cameras if you were doing later <laughs> on, like, <laughs> and, and time was kind of like oh we're gonna need to switch to a two camera shoot. Um, yeah. <laughs> again, it was a small movie. We were trying to keep it under, and I was like, "All right, we have to get another camera in here. We need to shoot about in so 15, <laughs> 15 days." Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. We gotta move. Um, uh, okay, uh, last question. I'm sure everybody is talking to you about this. Obviously, Angus Cloud. You know his performance. It's one of his last performances. Uh, have the two of you been able to sum up, put into words, just what that means now? Like uh, him having his. One of his last performances in your films, his performance is fantastic. Uh, talk about that. Oof. I know. It's like... Yeah. No, I, uh, I feel really honored and really, like, you know, like blessed, I guess is the right term. Yeah. I feel, like, really lucky. I felt really lucky that he wanted to do the movie, and I feel really lucky to be... It, it just feels great. I, I think he's really good in it, and, and I was... Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> it's super sad. I it's am I just mumbling right no, now? No, no, you're good. I mean it's hard to process. Yeah, but it was shocking and I think it was just so like it's just so sad. And I had kind of like my you know, like I feel like I maybe I'm a dad so I can look at everything like a dad, but it's like, oh you're right. Everyone gave me their trust. Yeah. And I wanted him to feel like that I earned it and that he had done a great job and that we could like talk about it. And yeah. I felt like that was something that was coming, you know, like the last text I said we were gonna get this film festival and I was like you know, I'm a very, like, guarded yeah. person. I don't want to show the movie until, like, the right moment. And I wanted <laughs> us all to watch it together. And I wanted him to see himself. And so those are things I was really looking forward to. And I remember even watching earlier before, like, when season two started. And, like, suddenly he got this way bigger part than he had in one. And I was like, right. and people were so excited. And I had, like, felt like I had this, like, great secret. I was like, you don't even know. <laughs> <laughs> right. He's going to do more than you're thinking. Um, and he and, was always so full of faith in yeah. you, yeah. in your project. You know what I mean? In this project, he was like one of the first people to sign right. on and do it. And he was your dream cast right. for that role. And he right. went like, so it's, it's a huge deal. Yeah. yeah and, and he's got a great monologue. Like he talks, you know, sort of, uh, spiritually and honestly in his character. And I think like that is such a beautiful thing to have. And I think you should be proud of that. And, uh, congratulations on this movie. You guys should be very proud of it. All right, thank you. Uh, Your Lucky Day is premiering here at Fantastic Fest tomorrow, Saturday, September 23rd. Can't wait for people to go see it. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Awesome. Awesome.